Hi there, welcome to the Liquid Arts Empty Venue, Volume 4. I'm Gino Brand, host of the Liquid Sound Podcast, a show dedicated to music and songwriting. And this Liquid Arts Empty Venue series was created as an online representation of our offline events. Uh, please enjoy this collection of music, poetry, visual art, and short film from renowned and ascending artists. We hope you and your families are having a healthy and safe summer, and enjoy the show. co-author of Band of Book Club with Ryan Estrada and Go Hyungju. It is a true story about 1980s in Korea. I will read a scene for you today. Will you shut up? Some of us want to study. It sounds like we have a fan of live theater. How about a nice round of applause for our newest members? They too have been studying hard all week. And now, ladies and gentlemen, gather round as the Anjan University Mass Dance Team performs the 900-year-old folktale, Young No and the Young Bon. It's the story of a hero who slays a monster. She dances so beautifully as the hero. Beautiful? Yes, but she is not the hero. Roar! I will eat you, young man! I am just a simple man. Liar, I know the smell of a young man. I have eaten 99! I will wash you all the smell. If I eat one more, I can get into heaven. And you wear the clothes of a young man. Then I will take the away. Spare me and I will give you treasures beyond your wildest dreams. Would you really? I will give you anything. Gold, rubies, diamonds. Then it is settled. Only a young man would have such riches to spare. Run! Ah! President Chun, step down, step down. President Chun, step down, step down. Huh? Why are they protesting during our show? They are protesters. And we might have a coordinated schedule with them. President Chun, step down, step down. What? Why? Activists need entertainment too. I joined this team to stay out of the politics. In times like this, no act is 
apolitical. Not even a monster dance? A monster who eats yangban? You do know what a yangban is, right? Mm. A politician can't get much more political than that. It's 900 years old! And I guess we'd better protest harder because we still have all the same problems. That entire dance was just to push people into wanting to fight politicians? Oh no, your loud drumming was enough to get them riled up for that. The rest is just the showmanship. Hey, sorry, we didn't mean to take you by surprise. It's just that that's why these dances were invented, to protest ancient Confucian noblemen. Uh, uh, I just, I came here to study, you know? I have nothing to the protest about. I get it, you want to learn some things. Uh, it's Hyunsuk, right? Yeah. Hey Hyunsuk, do you, uh, do you like books? Hello everyone, my name is Jack Jung. I'm a poet and translator. I primarily translate from Korean into English. Today, I'll be reading my own original poetry from a manuscript I'm working on titled Hocus Pocus Bogus Locus Ogre Opus. One, two of these poems, uh, one of them titled Lazarus, was published in, on the online edition of Poetry Northwest. Uh, the other, Gone Boy, will be forthcoming in the next issue of the Bennington Review, issue 9 to be precise. Um, and here they are. Hammer. Feeling extra technical, almost lyrical, almost an extraterrestrial, terraforming fanatical. Caltech engineers cannot calculate tactically weaponized nuking of my rate when it's so freaking fast I've already passed what predetermined fate cannot emancipate all according to procedures similar to illegal contrabanding of brands and pedicures, and the ecumenical dogma of an animated corpse, anticipated in the walk-up to the final boss is the territorial nature of a brood mother in her cage. So this sentiment sanctifies, don't wait, all the ecclesiastical particulars of proclamations barked out and sentimentalizes Ozymandias' onus. Each piece, a collateral collective bargaining memorandum of acts thrown off verandas, the ghost of post-it notes my Miranda. Ward orgy, scarred of pathology, a thousand time fold of bad iron can't fix. Lazarus. I died in my room and they turned it into a tomb, built to look like where I slept since little. Time is now, so thunder with me, get loud and prepare to receive these electric vibrations, earthen dome, stony carved out cave, not a final resting place. My smoke machine is at a friend's party. I'd love to come out and be messianic, like a twig on the Galilee Sea, performing, water walking, more godlike seemingly than the resurrection which none saw. I do care about the lepers deserving paradise on their island. How do you beg your soul to ask yourself to not kill you? Did I ask to be raised? I don't even know what my relationship to the guy was. He didn't stay somewhere between verse and chapter Mother nursed me back. Gone Boy. Valorize all forms of trash. It's this itch yet to be fully scratched. Oh no, it's not a rash. Not infectious, I'm vaccinated. All immigrants are migratory birds, however, who knows? Far from being fresh off the boat, this accent won't get accentuated with tenuous symbols of an organized system as an intro to the cosmic citizenry one enters by swearing off any allegiances to foreign princes and potentates, still asking for mail and rebates for taxes unpaid. 
position for transference into a positronic brain containing composites of what you saw and saw off the best parts from your dug up loot. From the cloak and dagger graveyard shift after this flu epidemic has passed the city. Death has undone the numbers. And put them together however you see fit. The world has already passed. The vortex auroras are up above the jungle's liftless canopy. Tomorrow is another day of one more day. Thank you very much.
My name is Nicola Shaw and I am a poet and a PhD student at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln pursuing her PhD in creative writing. I'm going to read three poems. The first is called Migration Song. At dusk I read the silhouette of Canada geese across the sky. Their sharp formation, a cutting verse, an arrow, a victory the shape of fingers making their way back to prayer. The geese are going home again. Warmth is returning to the soil, the air. They ride its current northward. The skein carries distance in their bellies. Their blood recites the coordinates of balsam poplars and Saskatoons. Having learned the cost of departure, I too crave return. Slack-jawed, I trace their letters from America. I know the pulsing of the blood that draws them homeward, how home becomes remembrance, vowels uttered in sleep. I covet their flight, how gently they expose the farce of borders. Beneath their wings, checkpoints vanish like sullen shadows. Soon the land in Horlock Park. I wish I were home to greet them to witness their landing, how they crease the sky's reflection in the folds of their wings and scatter the remains of evening light across the water. The second poem I'm going to read um, is a result of this pandemic. <laughs> I think we can all relate to feeling um, its deep exhaustion. Meditation on touch in the 12th hour of a pandemic. It is spring again, but my body is still working through last winter's kinks. I walk in the afternoons, take the grass when another is coming up the pavement. I try to keep my hands to myself, but that is courtesy. Still, I find myself reaching towards things, anything, the callous skin of branches, the green spine of leaves. Once my foot caught a stone and sent me hands first into the lawn. But the dew, the dew was such mercy that I stayed down a while. God, I want to be touched, to be held between someone's lips like a long vowel, to be revealed back to myself by a hand, peeling back the strap of a summer dress. I'm going to read one final poem. It is a poem um, entitled Promised Land, and it is a poem um, that addresses the migration um, of undocumented workers and peoples into the United States, especially coming from Central and South America. Promised Land. In this country, I'm wind slapped, red stain that will not dry, elbow deep in sand and earth, begging stones to water. Mama, I hear you calling me. Sleep disposes of me like a cannon. Sweat and silence land me. I gasp for air. I'm glad you are not here. Here is full of scorpions. Here the desert crossing is 500 years and counting. Thank you very much. This is called Walkabout, after the first 30 hours of wandering, boot sore, roadways rise like dusk's darkling ghosts, elude memory upon waking, cracking open the fissures of your fragile foot of earth, gnaw at the bones of world, tend to blisters like morning tea, steep in the waking sun, each breath blooms, caustic hope, the road does not relent. Bones will break as I have again and again, limped around again, I 
break myself. Miss Lyon's spine will rupture. Anyways. Every time my palms open, wet bury into my skin of earth to reset Miss Lyon thoughts to this. The trappings of flesh without bone and sinew blister to this. Fractures will reform, straight will plump up, mouthful of goose fat, spin muscle firmer, more yielding like silver grass dancing in autumnal winds, descend upon me like sleep to this. Bed of fallen leaves. What dreams may come as hope guides my eyes to seek, as expectation impels my feet towards pinpricks of daylight in my cave of overcast. Mind, forgive the fires who burned you. Accept the slow collapse of verdant loss. Let go of wood ash to reforced memory. And not all lights burn. Some so warm than to bear in days. What dreams may dive with the crow, whom I recognize with hopeful opal's eye? Am again nourished, fed string line to soar above. O oh, blackbird, the storms of pasts will pass.
Hi, my name is Jason B. Crawford, and thank you all for having me at the Liquid Arts. I'm going to be reading from my second collection of poems, Twerkable Moments. Werewolves. Your friends say it is a full moon tonight, so you need to come outside to go dance in a club soaked in gut. Saturated with enough fear to cut open. Let's spill out on the dance floor like fresh silver. You protest. There will be loaded tongues dipped in metal spoons. But you go. Put your best teeth on. Comb the flesh out of your fur. You are ready. And it is here boys say teach me to give permission. Let another empty them. Mouth drying out like an oven split open, where everyone has learned to read you like a library of fangs. And you wonder if this music is just another form of grief. If the beat keeps dropping to its knees one last time, and your hips are just trying to catch as many funerals as they can here. You are not a rabbit in a cave of wolves, rather a wolf. And the bats don't circle around you too closely for fear you might open your mouth, pour out the starlight you hold in your lungs here. You don't see a man that might see you as a river free to drink from. You don't really see men here at all, just children. Dancing cloud to cloud for each song, blooming celebration every time the comet shower makes backdrop for the moon. And oh, the moon, how we call it mother, how we dress it in heels in a contour, how in front of her we undress our own human husk, leave them somewhere by the shore, how we howl and prance and think nothing of the hunters or their arrows or bullets or laws, how we can be this wild here until the last song plays and the moon turns to dip behind the curtain of the trees while we grab our coats to be human again, to be hidden once more. And I'll read one more poem out of the collection. Thank you again so much for letting me be a part of this. Jerkin. My body ain't never no movement like the jerk, the hard break of the joint, as the knee smashes into the pavement for only the bones to twizzle themselves back up into a rubber porcelain, elbows up, bent at the waist, let them shins do the talking, restless pair of tambourines knocking into each other, giggling, whispering with the melody, dipping as low as the rooted thighs can, rocking with the the windstorm of the song. I watch as Showtime tries to run against the ice slick. He whirlpools sideways across the screen and we slam our hands together like car doors convinced Marky it was a good idea to backflip off the hood of my 91 grade Nissan Sentra. Anything Thing for the likes or really to get noticed or to know you're still breathing I speak footwork into the camera like a language only my crew know here we swim through the gravel spent hours driving around looking for the places for us to recreate landmines until we were a film reel of explosions a war of duggies and pin drops cracking at the asphalt we freeze on pointed toe before barreling into the air like a fist of birds bleeding out from their feathers. Dev in his two-tone skinny saying he's only doing drops for the rest of the videos. Landon grabbing the, th the air's throat and in, in, in his roundhouse van alive before the blade slipped into the soft of his stomach hitting a reject again. Smiling hard, us together and dancing like a toppling forest, the kind that only makes a sound if you're present and we were all there thank you 
Hey guys, this is Eric from New York City, and this is my rendition of Pure Imagination. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look. And you'll see into your imagination. We'll begin with a spin, traveling through the world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. If you want to view paradise a simply look around and view it anything you want to do it you want to change the world there's nothing to it there is no life I know to compare with pure imagination living there You'll be free if you truly wish to be. If you want to view paradise, a simply look around and view it. Anything you want to do it, you want to change the world, there's nothing to it. There is no life I know to compare with your imagination. Living there, you'll be free if you truly wish to be. Buddhist Fire Eater. Each time she strikes a match, she tilts her head back, imagines she is entering a Coke bottle's glass neck swallowing the last threads of sulfur before its sawtooth cap snaps on. After she seals her lips around the head of torch, she exhales with ease to release the flames of attachment she has been holding her entire life. A siren of gratitude widens its range. What is empty cannot be destroyed. This poem is called Ete Mon Amour. Summer, take me into your arms, into the folds of a tropical beach towel dusted with sand, the pavement shimmering glass in the blistering heat. Summer, the cafe windows are melting. I cannot touch your lava mouth, but I offset your fever with Thai iced tea and fresh lemon bursts. Summer, hold me dry and sunburned, lathering cream into my bruised back. Slide off my wet bathing suit, sticky on my belly like a second skin. Let your rays punish me. Your ocean breezes awaken a clear heart of salt, gull, and slow burn. Your gaze erases weighty thoughts, and you rise like smoke above the smoldering campfire. Pungent evergreen, drifting from nearby woods and scrub. How much I still believe since we first met. How you steady me while the world is ablaze. Keep me content. Love me into the filament of burning stars. The last poem is called, History Brings the Heart to Repent. 
It is good to praise the grandfather who is now dead. Holy love dwelled in your Polish accent, words as thick as shoe polish that you spat out like a curse to mimic the villagers who spat on you. War turns even a language ugly. Your holy world was my grandmother, your first cousin through arranged marriage, who held your hand, kissed the sweet meat between your legs until your sons were born. Then you slept on parallel twin beds, your gaze fixed on the ceiling, not across the aisle or through the corners of your turquoise eyes. Grandfather, I'm singing this song to you. The lyrics make your snowboard mustache twitch and you cover your face with a square of white handkerchief. Grandfather, I want to dig deep into soil and moisten my face with your remains, then lightly kiss your forehead. Like this, my head is so full of regret, holes bored through it like bagels, holes where the heart goes, but holes cannot speak. So I say your name, Charles, Charlie, Betzalel in Yiddish. I am walking through the night, the smack of gum against my cheek, streaks of lamplight on your ruined want, holy want, engendering want. Grandfather, foxes and mice burrow underground, furrowing old fields like lines on your wrinkled brow. What secrets did you swallow whole? How I want to cradle you, grandfather, in a crater, ricochet back 40 years to when you asked me to record your stories. And I turn my face away like a widow looking out a window. I asked you years later, but you said too late, too late for stories that went to sleep. Gay schluffen. Now there are no stars inside the body, but there is still sugar in my teeth, granular like the first guttural utterances that rip apart shiny pools of stone. I open my lips as if they were meant to part. You said birth and death are the only events that can enchant this world. The continuum of stars and water will persist as it did long before you entered this world and as it will long after I depart. Thank you. read uh, first uh, a poem from uh, my book, Short History of Monsters, which was uh, chosen by Billy Collins as the winner of the uh, uh, Miller Williams Poetry Prize in uh, 2019. 
Original love was a sentimental love song which when played backwards said, Satan is my friend forever, motherfucker. The Big Bang was when Adam got Eve pregnant with Cain or Abel or whichever of those good or bad young men was their first son. As for me, the first song I ever sang didn't get me a girlfriend, didn't make my best friend in high school's girlfriend leave my best friend who was kind of a dick. My first woman had nothing to do with the art of song and even less involvement with anything one might call love. There was work and money, long evenings spent in bars and train rides like morning headaches, vacations at the beach, cross-country trips on the bus or on the plane, and people who were either impressed or appalled that I had a job, a car, and a foreign-sounding name. After that came no work and no money, occasional run-ins with the great, but more often with the not-so-great, and phone calls from bill collectors who threatened to sue me, and death threats from people who were once my friends. True love came later when I had nothing and knew nothing. It took me by surprise at the time when all I expected was a steady downpour of noise and scorn and rain. And though the great flood may be yet to come, and the big bang a myth that never happened, I remember that in the beginning I had a dream where bees hovered around me as if I were a clear jar of raw brown honey, flew about my arms and legs and face as I stood on a high wire in the open air above the street with all its cars and buses and people with their skyward gazes and breathless whispers. And I remember one nearly perfect evening when my spirit turned around and around like a planet spinning and circling around all the days and years which I thought would never come. The original love that kept the bees from stinging and the jar shut tight. And I remember it was original love that brought me to this moment, moved me from school and work and money to here, to this tightrope on which I walk, knowing that whether or not I make it to the other side, I will fall deeply and completely with a gesture of tremendous force and grace, and like a man who, despite his many failings, remains great for all time. And this uh, second poem I'll read is uh, just came out from the, the Northwest Review. It's called Ten Poems to Write Before I Die. The one about being a young man who got over true lost love by teaching snakes to rebel against their masters. The one about running for president of the United States of America as the nominee of the Magic Mushroom Party and winning when everyone was too drugged up and tripped out to notice and then the 80s began. The one about the year I ran around on runaround suit as fast as Olympic great Kip Jo Kano until she finally left me for a man who was a better bowler than I was. The one about the three eggs, one of which was a duck egg, buried in the dirt for a hundred years until a relative from across the country or from a glowing land from beneath the bottom of the ocean pulled it out of her pocket and used it to make a salad that at first I refused to taste. The one about Salvador Dali and his piece of shit via by the sea and how he sat around debating his support of the Spanish monarchy and the best way to get from Coney Island to Manhattan's Upper West Side on a Friday at rush hour. Then there's the carnal epic about my life among the circus clowns in that small town in Florida and all those days making not love but jokes and double takes and spit takes and spraying seltzer water in each other's faces until we were exhausted and fell asleep on black vinyl fours with banana peels. And that angry poem full of piss and vinegar and sea salt and pork rinds and blue corn tortilla chips all mashed up into this disgusting mass representing man's inhumanity to man and all the years we wasted watching bad action flicks on massive flat screen TVs with cold drinks in our hands. And a poem about those days when we were impenetrable like lead, gathering number after number because we thought it made us safe because we thought it made us better. A poem about the heavy ghosts who wandered the cities at night, telling themselves stories about all the colors they used to see, and all the moments they could feel, and all the sound they could hear, in those magnificent days and hours of history when everything was light. And finally, 
one last poem about this table, this feast, and the pastries, glazed and fruit filled, and the drinks we lift like spaceships to our lips in celebration of this shattered earth. Shovels climb the earth and 
jumbo dump trucks with wheels taller than men. The pit like a child's sandbox would scale to absurd immensity. Thursday flight from Settil, street consultants back to big cities. They pop Merlot bottles so gleefully to greet the weekend. And as the wine buzz rose, the meter ran and ran. that fence and bless my feet in cool river water. Well, the promised tour never happened, but one time while out on a run over a shelf of shingled roofs, I could see the open pit mine seething mystery of blackness and many moving lights. 